It looks like review season has come early this year, and we're gonna start off with some rubber band guns from Precision RBS. We got to check them out at Toy Fair. Really nice guys. We got to play with a couple of their products, and I was really looking forward to checking out the blaster we're gonna be looking at today, which is the Hyperion, the big daddy blaster in the line from Precision RBS. Now before I begin, I should note that this was sent to me as a product sample. I did not pay for this, but they want me to do an unbiased review on their product and that's the only thing I do. So I will give you all the good and the bad about this, but some people like to know that stuff, so yes, this was sent to me for free. But let's start with the box before opening this thing up, taking a look at it in more depth, and then me giving you my opinions on it. So the box! is pretty big. This is the biggest blaster in the lineup so far. On the front, we have the blaster laid out very, very nicely. You can kind of touch and feel and move some of the parts around to get an idea of what you're gonna be working with. There's a nice clear window up here to show you all the rubber bands it comes with, uh, and they are in different colors to kind of indicate what rubber bands they are. The purples are the big, thick ones for, uh, I guess, more range, more power. The orange are an in-between, and the yellow are thinner with a little bit less power and a shorter package. On the back, there is basically all the information you can ever want out of this blaster, which is great for a company that is just releasing a new line. Uh, if you have uh, a question about what it could do, look on the back, and there it is. So, information about where all the storage is, uh, the flip-up site, what does what and where it does it, which is great to to see on a new product, so good job with that RBS. But yeah, very simple package, not much to go over, just the blaster in the front, uh, information on the back, and then everything else is inside. So let's rip this thing open and check it out. Inside the box you get targets, uh, which just punch out of the cardboard, uh, that have these nice little stands with them, um, I'll put those up later when I'm shooting, as well as the instructions. Attached to the blaster you get a quick load guide, uh, which just has how you load the rubber bands, where you load them, all that good stuff. You get 250 rubber bands of different sizes and it has some heft to it, and then you get the Hyperion itself. The Hyperion is a long blaster, and one thing I was concerned about was seeing how the grip is on one full opposite side of the other side of, a, of the blaster. I thought this was going to be really, like, uncomfortable because all the weight is going to, you know, be pulling down like this. But the Hyperion is very skinny and very, very light, and the grip is pretty darn comfortable. For my adult size hands, I'm only getting a little bit of a squishing on my pinky, but it's nothing bad. So I don't think my hand's ever gonna get tired of holding this like this. Uh, the only people I think that would have uh, a bit of a hard time after a while are uh, smaller children, but for everyone else, very light, very comfortable, except for the small squishing of my pinky, but that's because I have larger than normal hands. Um, I guess we should start with the main firing points on this blaster before I go over the, uh, the storing, uh, areas on it. So the main firing points on this blaster are shown with these transparent triangles that have numbers written on them, and the numbers correspond to which rubber bands you use. So, for the long rubber bands, you use the 190 millimeter rubber bands. For the mid-section, kind of shorter distance stuff, you use your 90 millimeter, and for this part, you can use either 90 or 60, and I'll get back to this feature in just a second because it's really cool. And then up here, we have what I like to call the sawtooth shotgun, because it looks like a saw. Um, but what this does, and this is so cool, you load up multiples of the 60 millimeter rubber bands, and then when someone gets close or you want to clear out a room, you just pull back right here and you shoot off a bunch of rubber bands. It's a very, very cool feature. I'll show it to you when I do the firing demonstration. Uh, you can either do it slowly or you can just pull it back really fast, but it just sprays out the 60 millimeter rubber bands in this awesome shotgun kind of blast. So I call it the saw shotgun, the saw tooth, whatever you want to call it. It's a very, very cool design feature. Now for the storage, and there's a couple of areas of storage, we have both of these things right here, which just take rubber bands and you wrap them around like that. You also have this part of the blaster right there, which uh, is nice because they set it up to take two different size rubber bands. So there's a couple areas of storage on here, which is very, very nice. So you can just hold a bunch of rubber bands and quickly take them off and reload whenever you need. Now, this is pretty cool. Not only does this part come off, so you could have a, a pistol whenever you want, this pistol has a little trick. I did not know 
what these buttons did for a little while, but it's on the back side of the instructions. This is pretty cool, is you depress these little orange buttons on the side and you pull this forward so you can use your 90 millimeter rubber bands and get some further distance shots, which is a very, very sneaky, but very awesome uh, thing that they've added in with the pistol just to give you a bit more performance out of it. Very cool, uh, nice secret kind of thing they have going on, which I like. When you're done using your pistol, you just slide this back in place and it locks in so you can go back to shotgunning or using your super long uh, distance rubber bands whenever you want. And the last little thing to mention is that on the back you have a rear sight that flips up and it has a crosshair uh, just printed on there so you can get some, uh, some slight aiming action going. Um, or if you're worried about rubber bands smacking you in the face or something, it can act as like a rubber band shield. So I don't know, some people are afraid of that, like a rubber band snapping off and hitting them in the eye. So I guess you could use that as kind of like a little rubber band shield if you're worried about that. But a nice little touch folds down into place nicely and out of the way. To load the Hyperion, you can do it just a simple loading where you pull it back and then put it on to this orange tooth thing. But we were taught a, a secret way, and it's also in the instructions, that you take the slack and you pull it. That was not the correct way of doing it. Hold on. You take the slack and you pull around on this like so, and it will get into this kind of a little dip area. And then once you have it, you want to pull this back until it clicks. There we go. And you're ready to put on another one. I guess you could put on two uh, per thing if you wanted, but that is up to you. I'm just gonna put on one, pull this back, click. And I'll put on my last purple rubber band that I have with me right now. Pull that back, click. And then I'll put on some orange ones, which you can totally do. You can put on the rubber bands in any order that you want and they will fire just fine. So you depress the purple ones out of the way and then pull that back, do that to it and pull, where's the click? There we go. And you just fire until they're all gone. You can get some nice fast shooting with it. For the sawtooth shotgun part, you want to load from the back to the front uh, so that none of the rubber bands get in the way. And I'm not a pro at doing this, so I'm pretty slow. But I guess eventually you'll get pretty darn fast at it. Now, one thing to note is that there are these angles on the side here. You, don't, you want your rubber bands to be on that so that they fly off easily. But yeah, you want to start from the back and work your way to the front so nothing gets in the way of any other rubber bands flying off. And then when you're ready, you just boom, just like that. So those are all the little parts of the Hyperion. I believe now it is time we take this outside and give it a shooting test. my opinion on the Precision RBS Hyperion. Now before we get into that, I'm going to answer the question of why rubber band guns? And this is something I had to think about, but there's three, four components to it. The first is rubber band guns aren't really a dead thing. I see them being sold at like art fairs and I've seen them at Hobby Town USA, which is like a hobby shop uh, north of Atlanta. So it's not something that has zero market to it. There's still rubber band gun enthusiasts, I guess that's what they're called, out there. So there is a, a market to tap into with this. The second, which is getting into the uh, the why would you get one, um, the first thing I thought of was maybe your office environment doesn't allow Nerf blasters or foam based blasters at all, so you shoot rubber bands. Well, here's a, here's a solution for you if you want to get 
a little more uh, cool points out of it or you want to get a little more distance and precision out of it. The third is that rubber bands don't shoot as hard as dart blasters, which if you're a parent who wants to have uh, some, you know, shooting fun with your kids, but you don't want to have really fast flying darts or darts that have a certain mass to them, uh, you know, hitting your kid in the face or something, rubber bands are a pretty good alternative to that. Rubber bands kind of glide there. They kind of, you know, spaghetti to you. And when they get there, they just, they, I don't know what this is called, but they don't like impact you. They kind of wisp on you, I guess, is the the way I'm gonna say it for this. And the last part is price. Rubber bands are really cheap. You can get a pound of number 33 rubber bands, which I think is the 190 millimeter ones, for like 770 at Office Depot or Office Max. So if you want a lot of ammunition, rubber bands are a really good solution for that. So those are kind of the four reasons that I thought for why rubber band guns. Now, onto the Hyperion. And this is gonna be a bit biased because all I really have to compare it to are those wooden rifle and pistol rubber band guns. So, uh, kind of simple stuff versus this. There's a lot going on with this. And just, I cannot find really anything bad to say about it because it does what it says it's gonna do, shoot rubber bands, and then there's just a bunch of accessories built around that. And there's really no cons to it. Like the only con I can think of is one, rubber bands are a bit annoying to pick up off of concrete because they're very skinny and they like to flop around. Um, and that it takes a while to reload stuff, but you get over that really fast once you figure out the methods for it. Like, for example, filling this up took me a while to fill it the first time, but then I realized you just hook it, spread your fingers, and put it on there, and you're done. You get it done in like uh, 15 seconds or so. The thing I have to give Precision RBS a lot of props for is designing this. There is a lot of stuff going on in this package, and I think they did their research and development very, very well and released something onto the market that feels complete and finished and that doesn't feel like it needs fixing, like with the Nerf Recon Mark II. All the ammo storage on this thing is very well thought out. You have your big rubber band thing right here on both sides. You have your smaller and medium rubber band stuff right here, just very well thought out. I love the sawtooth shotgun thing up here. It's such a cool, cool thing that they've added on that I really enjoy messing around with. And I like that you can use different sized rubber bands for this blaster. And uh, if you go into pistol mode, that you can pull this out. There's just a lot of cool features going on with this. And I think Precision RBS did a wonderful, wonderful job. So it's kind of weird that I have like nothing bad to say about this blaster because as a lot of people will tell you, I don't like a lot of blasters, but there's just so much going on with this and they did such a great job. Lots of props to Precision RBS for all this stuff. Now, the price, let's talk about the price. $25, which is $10 less than where I thought it was going to be. When I saw how big it was and it comes with 250 uh, rubber bands and I was like, ah, it's gonna be $35. I'm gonna say, oh, it's priced too high for something that shoots a rubber band. No, I think $25 is a pretty darn good price for this. Um, there's a lot going on with it. You get 250 rubber bands, you get the targets. Um, I feel like $25 is a very solid price for this. It doesn't feel too expensive and um, you definitely get something that's very, very cool out of it. Um, I even think that people who aren't gonna shoot rubber bands may find some sort of use out of this. Like it has a cool sci-fi look that maybe you could use it for a prop, um, especially if you bring it down to kind of the pistol. It looks a bit alien-y. Uh, put some stuff on the side, there you go. So $25 is not bad in my opinion uh, for the big daddy blaster in the lines. Overall, I think this is a pretty darn good way to start off looking at the line. I chose the big blaster because this is what we got to play with at Toy Fair and I was definitely looking forward to trying it out when they emailed me asking if I wanted a sample, a product sample to review. And uh, there you go. I'll have links in the description to where you can buy it or where you will be able to buy it in the future in the description. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this look at the Precision RBS Hyperion. And as always, have a great day wherever you are.